One of my favorite quotes about technology comes from Mark Weiser. The most profound technologies are those that disappear. They weave themselves into the fabric of everyday life until they are indistinguishable from it. For better or for worse, MIDI changed music. In 1983, the MIDI 1.0 specification went live, the International MIDI Association was formed, and the Yamaha DX7 hit the stores. Gradually, people that didn't have access to facilities to make music, either live or in the studio, could now make records in their bedroom. The results are still reverberating. Programs like Logic did not start out as digital audio workstations. They started out as MIDI sequencers. Opcode and Mark of the Unicorn released MIDI sequencers in the mid-1980s and didn't add audio features until 1990. MIDI is a data transfer protocol. It's a way for devices to send musical performance information. Devices like keyboards that generate MIDI data are called master controllers. A sequencer was a device used to record and playback MIDI data. Sequencers only store MIDI performance data. Early MIDI sequencers were hardware devices. They were connected with MIDI cables to hardware tone modules, sound generating devices used to receive MIDI data and produce instrumental sounds. Even though sequencers and tone modules are now contained in the same software program, it helps to keep in mind the MIDI tracks are different than the instruments assigned to them. In Logic, there are MIDI tracks and tone modules. Logic calls them software synthesizer tracks, and they include a MIDI track and an associated tone module. A tone module is referred to as being multi-timbral if it's capable of playing different sounds on different MIDI channels simultaneously. Software synthesizers such as Native Instruments Contact can support 16 separate patches on separate MIDI channels. Tone modules are usually organized by the type of synthesis they are emulating. Logic's ESX24 is a sample playback tone module. Instead of using oscillators, the digital source sounds are actual recordings. The Tyrell N6 is an emulation of an analog synthesizer. When you press a note on a MIDI keyboard, you are sending out a channel voice MIDI message organized as a set of bytes sent sequentially. The first message we call a status byte. It says, hey, I hit a note, and it's being transmitted on MIDI channel 1. This will be followed by a data byte that says, hey, I played middle C, MIDI note number 60, and this will be followed by a data byte that says, hey, I played that note really hard. This is the MIDI velocity. In addition to notes, MIDI channel messages could also include program changes. Also known as a patch change, these messages are used to tell hardware and software to change the synthesizer sound. When using general MIDI, the program change numbers will be affiliated with a particular type of patch. MIDI channel messages could also include controller information. There are 128 values associated with controllers. The most common are the mod wheel, controller 1, the sustain pedal, controller 64, and MIDI volume, controller 7. Just a reminder, controllers are just MIDI data. It is the tone module that determines how a controller change affects the sound. General MIDI is a standardized specification for how synthesizers will respond to MIDI messages. General MIDI was developed for video games by the MMA and first published in 1991. To display the General MIDI certification, a device had specific system requirements. 1. 24 voices, dynamically allocated. 2. 16 channel multi-timbral. 3. 128 MIDI program numbers, conforming to the general MIDI instrument patch map. 4. 47 percussion sounds, conforming to the general MIDI percussion key map. 5. Support for controller number 1, 7, 10, 11, 64, 
100, 101, 121, and 123. And six, support for channel pressure and pitch bend controllers. The most significant aspect of general MIDI was that a composer could write a part for acoustic piano, insert a patch change in the MIDI file, and any general MIDI synthesizer that played that file back would use an acoustic piano patch. It ensures that playback of MIDI files access the same instruments. The general MIDI specification requires 128 instruments assigned to specific program numbers. Instrumental selection in MIDI is done by recording a program number on the MIDI track. General MIDI also requires a specific layout of drums and percussion. Percussion is accessed on MIDI channel 10 and must use this layout of 47 samples. Remember, a MIDI file is not an audio recording. It is just performance data. That's why the files are so small compared to audio. General MIDI specifies the patch will be accurate. It doesn't mean the sounds are any good. Many general MIDI sound fonts lack sufficient memory to store quality samples, or they use FM synthesis in place of samples. The standard MIDI file format was created as an export format for software sequencers and hardware workstations. It was not part of the original MIDI specification, but it was a recommended practice. When you export or import a Type 1 standard MIDI file, your tracks show up as individual tracks with the notes, track names, controller, and patch change information. But a standard MIDI file also contains a global header that contains the track count, the standard MIDI file format, and most importantly, the tempo and the meter map of the music. Standard MIDI files are a crucial part of my workflow. I compose in Digital Performer so I can hear a mock-up as I move forward. I export that file as a standard MIDI file and import it into Finale to create the score. I also export the standard MIDI file to Pro Tools to set up the session and the click track to record the acoustic instruments. There are literally thousands of standard MIDI files available on the internet. Some of these are actually excellent arrangements of pop songs, performances of classical works, and archival work like American folk songs. The Mac operating system includes an optimized virtual instrument called DLS Music Device. It is compatible with General MIDI and also with the industry standards downloadable sounds format and sound fonts. This Mac synthesizer provides applications with acceptable quality sounds and low latency sample playback. I did a search for Chariots of Fire standard MIDI files and came up with several on this website. Logic gives you numerous powerful features to improve on the quality of these standard sound fonts. Let's take a look at what we can do to take this rather generic sounding track and turn it into something professional. I have opened up the Chariots of Fire standard MIDI track in Logic. If we go take a look at our tempo, we notice that the tempo map is here, 70 beats per minute. And if we take a look at the time signature, 4-4. These are part of the global 
settings in your standard MIDI file. In addition to the global information, each track has specific header information in addition to the notes. Here we notice a bank selection. Bank selection was initiated to give MIDI control over more than 128 patches. Conforming to the general MIDI standard, here's program one, patch one, bright piano. In addition, we have a chorus send and a reverb send and MIDI controller seven, volume. Specifically, these are all assigned to channel one and loading this track will load the piano sound and apply the appropriate reverb and volume. Logic, when it opens a standard MIDI file, will assign instruments as it sees fit. Let's take a look at the piano. For this demonstration, we'll use the standard DSL MIDI piano. Not a particularly strong set of samples. Now, contrast that with the Steinway patch from the ESX24 library. If you look at the samples in the ESX patch, you'll notice that there are dozens of them, and they seldom span more than a few notes. Okay, let's take a look at the synth bass. Not really a bad sound, but we really don't hear the octaves. I split the octaves to separate tracks, assign them to the Terrell N6, put all eight voices on one note, and open up the filter slightly on the lower track. Alright, let's take a look at the percussion. The standard MIDI file assigned a series of samples, but if we listen to the original track, it's not really samples, it's much more white noise. This film was right at the dawn of digital, but the Fairlight and the Synclavier were just emerging. For a more vintage sound, I've taken the percussion track and assigned it to the Terrell N6. Notice, only white noise in the mixer and I assign velocity to affect the filter envelope. Some vintage plate reverb helps also. Okay, let's take a look at the brass track. Clearly the DLS uses a series of samples. Rather generic sounding samples. Again, if we listen to the Vangelis track, it's much more analog sounding and probably use the CS80. For our Vangelis track, we'll assign the brass to the Tyrell N6. If you watched the end of my last tutorial, you saw how to create an analog brass patch.
The original standard MIDI file used a rather generic choir patch for the uh, pad sound. Not a particularly good sound, and really a very bad loop. We'll replace that with an analog sounding filter sweep pad. Last but not least, let's take a look at the string track. The DLS has a very generic kind of string patch. If you look at the string writing, it's very chordal and very keyboardish. Authentic string writing tends to be more spaced and with more independent lines. For our analog synthesis track, we'll split the strings into low celli and high violins and assign them to string patches on the Tyrell N6. Here's my Logic Analog Synthesis mock-up. <laughs> 